Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Lewis versus Scott. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Mr. Lewis, you say for 35 years you've always known you were Miss Scott's biological father, but circumstances kept you away. You claim the DNA results will prove you are Crystal Scott's dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Scott, you claim you are Crystal's biological father. You were at her birth, raised her from day one, and are still legally married to her mother. You say the results will prove you are Crystal's dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Lewis, 35 years... So why is this so important to resolve now? Your Honor, uh, <clears throat> this is something to me has been long overdue. Um, she is my daughter. Uh, I believe her, when her mom told me uh, 35 years ago that I was the father, I never doubted her. Um, I look at her, a lot of pictures. I looked at her when she was small. I looked at her as she became an adult. And um, she's my daughter. We. Um, have a lot of the same characteristics. Um, when I look at her, I say, wow, I see myself. And we've taken some pictures together with the other kids, and uh, she looks as much like me as all the other kids. So I believe in my heart, I always believe from the moment her mom told me that she is my daughter, and I still believe that right now today. Miss Scott, were you told as a child that Mr. Lewis was your biological father? Your Honor, my mom never told me that Mr. Lewis was my um, biological father. Um, my dad here, he raised me, he taught me how to fish. We went on uh, family vacations. Um, that's one, we were in Florida. Um, just last year, we were there for a family reunion, well, class reunion. Um, he taught me what to expect from a man, um, hardworking. This was your dad? Mm -hmm. And you were told yeah. this was not just your father figure, this was your biological no, father. That's what you biological... grew up thinking. Yes, ma'am. For 35 years. 35 years. Mr. Scott, you've been a father to your Ye daughter. Yes, Your Honor, I have. And you believed she was your daughter. No if, no answer about it. Regardless you were married of what. to her mother. Yes. Her mother is your wife. Exactly. Still is your wife. Still is. So, Mr. Lewis. Yes. What was the nature of the relationship you had with Miss Scott's mother? Well, Miss Scott and I had met, and we uh, we got we, we got into a relationship. We both uh, I was in love with her, and I believe she was in love with me. I was an unhappy man. She was an unhappy wife. So you knew she so was married. I knew she was married. Exactly. And you said you were an unhappy man. I was unhappy. Were, were you an unhappy man or an unhappy husband? I was an unhappy husband. And, uh, okay. So um, we became involved, and uh, we had probably an eight-year relationship. Um, she told me that um, in seven months, she asked me, uh, who do you think this child is? I said, well, it's your husband. She said, no, it's yours. And uh, I was stunned, but I believed her from that moment because she... To me, in my opinion, she was the type of woman she wouldn't come to me and just make up something or, or say something like that. Um, she was a good woman. She still is, I believe. And um, So, to be clear, uh -huh. you had an eight-year affair with this man's wife. I did. How often were you seeing her? As often as I could. Three, maybe, maybe two Every or three day. times Every... a week. As often two or as three times a week? Yes. In the daytime? Uh, in the afternoon. In the afternoon? Yes. So, Mr. Scott, you were working? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, it'd be late at night when I get home sometime. Eight, nine, ten at night. So, you worked long hours? I worked long hours. So, you had no idea she had had an eight-year affair with Mr. Lewis? No, no, ma'am, yeah. That is a fact. I do not know that. So, uh... So, the first time you're finding out that they had an eight-year affair is today in this moment, the today. same time I'm finding out. Correct. 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 As, that is correct. So, Miss Scott, when's the first time you remember meeting Mr. Lewis? When I was little, I used to be up under my mom's tail all the time. Everywhere she went, I had to go. When I was a kid, um, five years old, six years old, when she would say, let's go to the store, that's when we would go and meet Mr. Lewis in the store. 
when we would meet him, um, of course, it would just be me, her and I, and uh, we would meet him. He would give me five, ten dollars and they would walk a little bit down the aisle, you know, and hug, kiss. And you I, saw your mother hug mm-hmm, and kiss Mr. Lewis. And I would Mr. just Lewis. be... And so who did your mother tell you this man was? She just told me he was a friend. That's it. That's all she ever, that's all she ever said. I didn't know anything other than... Because, you know, I mean, she's my mom. I trust her. So with her saying that he's just a friend, that's all I thought was he was just a friend. And to this day, to this very day, has she ever told you Mr. Lewis is truly your biological father? No. She told me that finally she told me it was in January of this year that there's a possibility. So she finally admitted to there being a possibility. A possibility. So this is a 35-year-old mystery. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And now you have to look at the man who you've believed all your life is your biological father. And now you have to have very real questions because your mother has finally, after 35 years, validated those questions. And it hurts to think that he could not be my father. Because you say he's your hero. He is. And that's been something you could rely on your whole life. hmm I can honestly say that he has shown me true love. Unconditional. Unconditional love. Oh, you know, that's what dads do. And that's why we fight so hard in this courtroom to make sure people know their father and children have relationships with their fathers. And then there are young women and young men that come into our courtroom that are in your position, really torn between two potential fathers. I am torn. I'm torn between feeling that, you know, he's my dad because he's been there, and then I'm torn between all my questions as to why. And when you say why, if... Mr. Lewis knew my mom was pregnant and she told him that I was his, then why not make it right from the beginning? Instead of having me go through years and years of pain, looking, um, looking at my, my, my family, um, hearing family members even say that, you know, I'm not his. You've heard family members say this to you? Mm-hmm. They said it to your face? Mm-hmm. Wow. What did they say? Mm-hmm. I had a family member say that, um, you know, dad's not your dad anyway, so. Really? Mm-hmm. And so this has been years of pain. hmm Looking in the mirror, trying to figure out who you are. You know one side of you <clears throat> is your mom, but you don't know the other side. And in my subconscious thinking, I'm really upset because I don't know who my dad is. And so, because they never divorced, Mm -hmm. after you all broke up, you just didn't pursue this. Why didn't you pursue this? I have to ask this question. This is what what Crystal, what Ms. Scott was just saying. Like, once you knew, once she told you definitively, this is your daughter, then where are you in this? Why are you not pursuing it? Why not that extra step? We we broke up, but that is is true. And And I thought about all those things that you're seeing right there, you know? But then I also thought about the harm it would do. What, what it's going to be, what's going to come after that, you know? Are we, are him and I are going to cu- get into it. One of us go to graveyard, one of us go to prison. So I said, just let this play out the way it's going to play out, however. Now, it hurts. It, it hurt me because, you know, I'm look, I know that I have a child that I, you know, I can't go out and tell the world this is, this is my child. Mr. Scott, how does this feel to stand in this courtroom and listen to this man say he was with your wife for eight years, that she told him immediately that Crystal was his biological child, that they would meet up at stores and he would buy her toys, and you, you didn't know any of this? She is still my daughter, just regardless of what. She is mine. I don't care what he think. I don't care what they feel. She is mine because I have Asa. And, and, uh, uh, and by the way, and, and, and since he's talking about uh, what I was going to do to him, I ain't never planned to do nothing to him. But you honor from my heart, it's the truth. I've been knowing him a long time myself, and, and he know I have. This is tough. 
because there are so many dynamics going on, your, your ultimate allegiance should have been to the child if she was your biological child. And I know what Miss Scott feels like. It feels like, okay, you all may have done what you did and had whatever relationship you had, but who chooses me? Who says my best interest comes before whatever else is going on? Even if you had to get into a confrontation with Mr. Scott, am I not worth that conversation? No one it... chose me. No one chose me. And that's what I know you feel when I look in your eyes. And my, you... my mom didn't even choose me because she chose to not even come to, to, support, to support me. Everyone is thinking about themselves from when they were young, they were thinking about themselves. I don't want to get in a confrontation. If he had came in my path, I would have did this. Everything is I, 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 but nothing was ever done in the best interest of me. I could not have said it better. And that, that hurt. It hurts. And now I've had my own children and, you know, they know my dad to be their granddad and... And that's something, ultimately, you may have to explain. But what I won't do is, I won't let it linger on for 30 plus years like they did me. What are your hopes today, Ms. Scott? I mean, I hope my dad is my dad. But if not, we have to proceed and, and take it from there and... It's hard. I feel like I've been placed in a hard spot. I've been placed in the position that I didn't even ask to be in. <laughs> and I feel like everything that they've done, the three of them collectively, my dad, Mr. Lewis, and my mom, it's just all, it's been pushed up under the rug all these years. And now, you know, it's just <laughs> all coming back down on me. It's like a set of unfolded clothes. Mm. I have to sit here and I have to fold all these clothes. And sort them. And, and sort them out and put them where they belong. And What a metaphor. Yes, indeed. And I think as we begin to sort through this, as you so eloquently put it, the first place we need to start is the truth. And I have that for you. Jerome, the envelope. Ms. Scott, it's been 35 years and you do not deserve to wait one minute longer. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Lewis versus Scott, pertaining to whether Mr. Lewis or Mr. Scott is the father of Ms. Crystal Scott, it has been determined by this court The biological father is Mr. Lewis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. Brother Br Lewis, I don't hate you. I don't fault you. It's my wife. You can't do no more than what she did. And I know that. And I would like to apologize to you. In my opinion, um, I still believe that her mom is a great mom. Uh, we both made a mistake. Crystal, I love you. I'm sorry that you were placed in this situation. You are my daughter. I've always believed it. And hopefully we can move on forward from there. And um... while I appreciate, gentlemen, <clears throat> this beautiful moment where you acknowledge one another, I'm just incredibly disappointed that all the focus is not on Crystal. It's just not about y'all anymore. It's not. It's not. I, I, it's I, not I, about. It's, it's not, not about what Mama did. It's not about what he did. What, it's not. It's not even. It's not about that. And take a moment, because I want you to have your say. Because this is for you and your children. I'm glad I got the results, 
But then I'm thinking in my head, now where do I go from here? Mm. It hurt me when I was talking to a family member last night and I was telling her, I said, you know, you think of your family as your family. You know, you don't think as people as half this. And she was saying, well, I'm still, I'm not half, I'm whole. But in the back of my mind, they're not. And it hurts. But Mr. Scott and Mr. Lewis, I'm concerned now about what Crystal said. And I need you all to be concerned about that too. Well, I am. I am concerned about it. And I need you to be there for her. And sometimes that means, as a parent, putting your feelings aside. That's what it takes. <clears throat> because right now, she's standing there with tears coming down her face and both y'all looking at me. I like to say I'm sorry. Very sorry. Please, may I give you a hug? I love you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want you all to go talk to Dr. Jeff. I want you to work through this. I want you to really start thinking about how you start building a bridge. It won't be easy, but you will be able to do it. I wish you all the very, very best. Court is adjourned.